Blessed be the name of the Lord, our great God. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. their name today O God we lift you up because you are great and greatly to be praised from the rising of the sun O God to the going down of the very same your name is worthy to be praised your name O God is above every other name and no foreign God can take your place. Lord, this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, today we come before you humbly asking, oh God, that you would touch our lives that you would cause us today, O oh God, to experience you in a brand new way. Lord, give us an encounter with you. We invite your presence to be with us, to stay with us. O oh God, we give you praise and glory today because you deserve it, mighty God. Thank you, God for keeping us, for guiding us, for protecting us. Yes, even in times, oh God, when the enemy has risen up against our lives, your spirit has raised a standard against him. So today, God, we come boldly to you, knowing that you are our shield, Buckler, you are our protector. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you, Father, for just being there. You're a good, good Father. So today, Lord, even as we delve into your word, I pray, God, that your written word will become rhema in our hearts, in our spirits, in our souls. Give us a revelation today, O oh God, like no other. Teach us by your Spirit, Lord. We open our hearts now. today with another word of encouragement. I'm coming to you today with another word from the word of God and it is truly my hope friends that you will be blessed today, that you will be motivated, you will be encouraged to keep on this path 
that you're on for the Lord. It's not easy at times, we know. The adversary, he comes, he comes hard. But we can stand, friends, stand in God, stand knowing that he has started a very good work in us. And anything God starts, he finishes. He's not like man. He's not a promise breaker. He's a promise keeper. And everything that he has ever said about your lives, you shall live and not die to declare his works. Your eyes will not close in death until everything that the Lord has declared over your lives have come to pass. Everything. All right? So trust in the Lord, friends. Keep your chin up. You know, don't allow the adversary to discourage you to the point where you just want to throw in the towel and done with God and done with church and done with people and, oh yeah, <laughs> I've been there. Felt like I want to just done with everything, but God, but God, there is always something left to hold on to, even in the deepest and darkest times of despair. God is there. Oh yes. And he loves us friends with an unfailing love. Where the love of man carries us and then drops us. <laughs> Our great God will pick us up. Marvelous are his works friends. He's our Lord God Almighty. Yes he is. He's our King of Kings. He's our Lord of Lords. And we should serve him, understanding who he is. We must serve God in spirit and in truth. We must. We cannot just do it all in the flesh. Yes, we open our mouths physically and we praise but that praise has to come from a heart that is grateful to God. A heart that is thankful. A heart that says, even though it has been broken by circumstances of life, yet will I praise God. You have to make up your minds, friends. It's something that you have to do. You have to make up your minds that you're going to serve God no matter what. All right. So today we're continuing with the topic that we have been on. And it's a call to holy living. So this is going to be our third installment. And then we'll wrap up tomorrow according to what the Lord desires. So we looked at some verses before in 1 Peter chapter 1, but today we are on chapter 2, right? 1 Peter chapter 2, still talking about living a holy life. What exactly is that? What is living holy? And we did mention that it's a sacred life. It's a consecrated life. It's a sanctified life, which really means to be called out and set apart for God's use. Are you called out, friends? Do you believe that the Lord has called you out to live a life that is pleasing unto him? Or do you see yourself as just this regular Jane or this regular John that has no purpose, no real destiny you're just bouncing through life and everything that happens in your life is coincidental and you know there is no force that is guiding your life is that how you see yourself no friends the lord has called us all right he has called us he has blessed us and we are dedicated to him and to his service and if we should constantly be reminded of that, or if we remind ourselves of, of, 
all of that. We wouldn't just live anyhow. You understand? You would understand your purpose. You would understand that you just cannot live anyhow. You cannot be like your unsaved friends or even some of your Christian friends because there are what you call carnal Christians. These people are guided by their flesh. Anything their flesh wants, their flesh gets. They're the ones that will say to you when you're trying to live for God, girl, it don't take all that. You know, they're the ones that would discourage your life and call you names like holier than thou and you think you're better than anybody else. Because I'm telling you, friends, whenever you make a decision to stand up and stand out for Christ, you will be criticized. You will be mocked. You will be called names. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Retaliate? No. No, you take your suffering, you take your persecution, and you carry on with Christ. Be so encouraged that nothing moves you. Even the mockery of friends, the criticism of friends are those who say they care about you. Because I don't think when a stranger says something, it is, you know, as effective to hurt as much as when it comes from somebody who is close. All right? So I'm really here to encourage you today to keep on living for God. It doesn't matter, you know, what the outcome is with man. But please, God, even if you have to disappoint man, all right? Live right. Live holy. Talk right. Practice it. Practice it. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Yes, it's not a suit that we wear. We have mentioned that before. It's not something you put on and take off. That is why we should endeavor never to live lives that are compartmentalized, where we have one behavior for church, one for home, one for the workplace, one in the community, no friends. Let us be consistent in our walk with Christ. Not everybody is going to appreciate you. Not everybody is going to like you. But as long as you know that you're pleasing God, and some say, how do I know when I'm pleasing God? Check his word. What does his word say? Are you living according to his word? Or are you just a hearer? Friends, when we start to do God's word, instead of simply saying it, then we know that we are pleasing God. So today we have some additional instructions towards holiness right here in God's word. So that's our guide. Our guide is not necessarily in the bestseller book that was written. Okay, our manual is not necessarily something that a, a great author wrote but it's in the book that was written by holy men of God inspired by God this timeless word this Bible that many say they do not believe what's written therein but those of us who have been washed by the blood of Christ and we believe that we are saved, this is our manual. Some brilliant person calls it our basic instructions before leaving earth. What a, what a very fitting name. I like that. So let's get into the word, friends. First Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. And we're just going to take our time and look at what's there. And then we pray. And then I give you some other words of encouragement and then we close. All right. So let's get into it. I'm reading now from the New Living Translation. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Like newborn babies... You must crave pure spiritual milk 
so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. Know that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. All right? The King James Version says of that first verse, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Friends, we live in a world, right, where we get the word of God from time to time. It's preached, it's read, and it seems as if the more word we get, for some of us, the worse our behavior becomes. And I say this because as a child growing up in church, I've been in church for most of my life. Yes, I backslid at a particular junction, but the Lord quickly drew me back to him. So I can say that I've been in church for a little while, right? And I'm telling you, over the years, one of my things has always been to watch the example of those who lead. Some people perhaps think, you know, that as long as every tub have to sit on their own bottom, as the elders used to say, that it shouldn't matter how we live, you know. Let everybody answer to God for themselves. Some say, I didn't ask to be any role model. And these are some of the, the things that people who want to just live their lives anyhow, but still call themselves Christians. These are some of the things that we hear. But I've always been drawn by those who lead. And this is what I'm finding today, friends. And let's just keep things real. We have leaders who pretty much do what they want, but preach how others should live. They pick up the Bible and they preach holiness, yet some don't start live holy yet. All right? And I'm concerned about that because, you see, people, they follow their leaders and my first call this morning is to leaders, whoever, in whatever capacity, it does not matter what the title is, pastor, bishop, priest, prayer warrior, prayer leader, you know, worship leader, usher leader, I mean, we're all leaders and ministers in our own right, okay? But I'm saying, those who lead, I'm a leader as well. We have to mind the way that we live because if we don't, we're going to become stumbling blocks for others. I, I would like to submit to you today, friends, that there are adults who follow their pastor. Adults, I'm not talking about children who go to school and when they come home, they tell uh, mommy and daddy, teacher say, and everything is teacher say, teacher say, is like teacher is the law of the land. That's how children are. They respect their teachers highly. And sometimes even what mommy and daddy say, you know, has no value because teacher say, well, that's what I'm saying. There are some people who live their lives like this. Pastor say. Right? They follow their leaders. And some leaders don't seem to understand that. So when the word of God says to us, get rid of all evil behavior, there has to be a standard. There has to be a standard and there has to be an example that is set first by those who lead. I truly believe that. All right? And then lay people would have a good example to follow. But when you have situations where leaders are indulging in foolishness, even with members, 
and then expect to be respected. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. The Holy Spirit is just leading me to talk about this today, this particular aspect. Because all of this has to do with holy living. A lot of leaders talk the talk, but they are not walking the walk. You don't have to be all up in their bedroom to know if they're living right. Look at the fruits. Right? Look at the fruits. There are leaders who gossip as much as regular members. Gossip, gossip, chat people business, tear down people. All right? Have nothing positive to say about certain people. Why? Because they're holding grudges. Grudges, resentment, hatefulness. But they're leading. Watching people, you know, cross-eyed and sideways. And all they say is, oh, we're humans just like everybody else. Yeah, everybody understand that. But when you took on that post and that position of leadership, it came with responsibilities. No, it's not about perfection. No, but the Lord is calling us to a life of holiness. What does that look like? So the word of God is admonishing us, all of us, right? But I'm saying to leaders today, let us lead well. Let us be examples. You know, I try never ever to put people up on pedestal. There, there was a time when I did that. I am one of those friends who was guilty of putting man on a pedestal come to find out that they're fallible and that was the wrong thing but I'm saying to you the Lord has blessed my life with two wonderful pastors my pastor and his wife wonderful examples they teach us they mentor us they train us and then they send us. You understand? They're not manipulative. They're not controlling. You understand? They're loving. They love us. They pray for us. They correct us. They discipline us. Listen, we will quicker accept discipline from somebody who we know love us than from somebody who we know don't care about us. Isn't that the truth? So the word of God today is saying, be done with all deceit. What is deceit? Deception. Right? Hypocrisy. We see that a lot in the body of Christ. Oh, yes. And some will say, you know, Sister Diane, these things will remain until Christ returns. But it's good for us to be reminded of how we should live. Of when the Lord says, I'm calling you to a life of holiness. And he says, put away these things. We must, by the Spirit of God, walk in such a way that it's worthy, right, of the, of the praises of God. The Lord will be pleased with us when he sees that we are working his word. We're doing his word. We're not just looking inside there for the prosperity scriptures and everybody wants to be rich and prosperous and there's nothing in and wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that in and of itself. But if that's all we're after, but we're mean, we're hypocrites, we're jealous, and everything else out of our mouth is unkind. That's what the word of God is saying. Put those things away. All evil speakings. If somebody comes to you, be it leader or lay person, you know, speaking negatively about others, reject it. All right, reject it. Say no. I will not be a part of this. This is evil. This is wicked. Listen, friends, there has to be a time when we... We, 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 we draw the line when we say, you know what, we're not, we're not doing this. We're not doing this anymore. Do not allow their criticism to cause you to back away from right living. So what if you and them used to sit and gossip? You have made up your mind that you're not doing that anymore. So they're going to say, oh, look at her now. Look at him. 
going on as if he's better than us. When we all sat here together and did this. Friends, let this day be the day when you make up your minds that you're going to live right. We should commit our lives to God every day, friends. And even if you do that and the adversary comes at you, stand. Stand. Stand in God. Right? The word of God says, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. What does that mean? Friends, we have to stain those things that draw us closer to God. What are some of those things? First and foremost, the word of God. The word of God is our food. It starts out as milk. You know, when you come to Christ, the word of God is like milk to you. You know, you can't eat certain hard food yet. So you start out with the milk that nourishes you like newborn babies. You know, you don't see them giving babies hard food right away. As soon as they're born, they get some milk first. The milk of God's word. That's what we need so that we can grow into a full experience of salvation. Whenever we pour the word of God in our lives, friends, we will start to live holy. We will start to live according to God's standards. We will live as if we're called out, as if we're sanctified. Yes. The word of God says we should cry out for this nourishment because know that you have tasted of the Lord's kindness. So we see where the Lord is taking us. He has been gracious to us. Right? We're here because of his grace and his mercy. And all he requires of us is that we live holy lives unto him. All right? So do not follow bad examples. Right? Because they are good examples and they are bad examples. Let's follow after those who follow Christ like Paul would say right follow me as I follow Christ you're not obligated to follow anybody that's living a life that's contrary to what God requires all right so let us do what God's word says and lay aside all evil behavior all malice Put away those things, hatred, envy, jealousy, somebody's pushing ahead in life and some become jealous, jealous to the point where they want to hurt them, jealous to the point where they make trouble for them, jealous, jealous, jealousy, it's a terrible thing. The word of God, I think, is in Job says, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Can you imagine that? Jealousy is being compared to death. It, 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 it kills. It kills. It destroys. If the Lord is blessing somebody, be happy for them. Your turn will come. All right? When your turn comes, wouldn't you like others to be happy with you and celebrate with you? That's how we should live. That's how we should live, friends. That's what the Lord is calling us to. Yes. So today, just before we pray, right? Just think about the ways that challenge you as a Christian that challenge your walk just think about it for a moment when you say to yourself you know I could really live for God you know if I want you to think about those ifs if what what is hindering you what is the stumbling block in your way is it a relationship is it is it a person? And when I say relationship, I'm not talking about your marriage. 
your 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 covenanted relationship where you're married to that person so you don't just get up and walk away because you're not pleased about something you know some of us nowadays if if our head hurt us in our marriage we're ready to walk away. When I just got married, I used the word divorce so many times. I, I think, you know, if my husband had taken me serious, we would not be together today. Because I had become this person that thought that life was supposed to be a bed of roses. And, you know, the Lord don't want me to be unhappy. He called me to be happy. You know, I know the kind of stuff. That some married people say, especially women, you know, when things are not going our way, their way, right? But I'm saying, if you have a particular relationship in your life that you're not covenanted, you didn't, you didn't tie no knot, and that relationship is causing you to live contrary to God's word. Listen, sever ties, man. Cut. Cut it. Cut it out. Some will say, oh, well, it's not that easy because, listen, friends, anything that's going to stand in the way of you living holy unto God, you have to reevaluate that. You have to check that. It doesn't matter what it's bringing to your life. Physically, you have to check that. Because you see, there is nothing that's worth your soul. Nothing. No relationship, no person, no circumstance, no situation. So look into your life and say, what is stopping me from being my best for God? What's hindering me from walking with God? without deceit, where you're not walking as if you're saved, but you know that something is there. No, friends. Let's put it away. Put away the deceit, the deception, giving the impression that something is a particular way, and we know within ourselves that it's not. That's deception. All right? God knows and we know as well what those things are. So let's just ask the Lord now to help us to live right. If you're a leader, say, Father, let it begin with me. I want to live a life of example so that others can have something to emulate. They can have something to follow. I will not sit with the enemy and plot against even those who are my subordinates, because some people do that, you know. Leaders do that, right? They plot against and they are envious and jealous of even those who they mentor, who they lead. That's not good. That's not good at all. All right? So we have to really look into these things. And ask the Lord to help us. He will. The Lord will help us. If we make up our minds that we're going to walk by His Spirit, we're going to be well on our way. But if we want to just yield to everything flesh wants, we're going to be in trouble with God. Alright? There are some things that we do from time to time. If we're not careful, those same things are going to lead us away so far from Christ that when we catch ourselves, and I pray it never happens, we're so far and deep that we feel as if, you know, the Lord wouldn't want us again, which is a lie from the pit of hell. So I'm saying, let's look at the situations now as they stand and ask the Lord to help us. All right, let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, O oh God, for your goodness. Above all else, God, we thank you for your mercy, your grace that you have extended to us time and time again. Lord, help us not to take your mercy and your grace for granted. Help us not to think that 
once we become saved and we say yes to you that if we should leave the light and go back into the darkness that we're still saved help us oh god to walk according to those things that you have instructed in your word it's there for us it's our manual it's our guide it leads us it directs us lord give us wisdom knowledge and understanding when we read your word so that we would understand what we're reading, the knowledge that we're gaining and the wisdom would help us to apply it to our lives. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would open up the mind, our minds, open up our understanding. Oh God. Thank you, Father. Lord, bless your people today. Many are desirous of a closer walk with you. But some are saying that, how do I do this? How do I, how do I get close, closer to God? Lord, it's by your word. Your word has given us the instructions. So Lord, help us not just to be hearers or readers of your word, but to become doers to become active participants in your instructions, those things that you say to us, do it, do it this way and you will prosper. Do it this way and you will succeed. Do it this way and I'll be pleased. Lord, help us today. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our trespasses. Those things, oh God, that do not please you. We ask you, O oh God, to cleanse our lives. Wash us. Wash us, O oh God. Wash us. Wash us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Yes, Lord, give us a desire, a burning desire for holiness, for holy living, for living right. Help us to abhor evil. Yes, Lord. To reject those things that you have rejected. To hate what you hate and to love what you love. Help us, oh God, to love you, to love ourselves, and to love others. We would not, we would not deliberately go out of our way to hurt you, even to hurt ourselves or to hurt others. Sometimes, oh God, we are mean. We do and we say terrible things about one another and still expect to please you. Forgive us, oh God. Sometimes, oh God, we act presumptuously. Yes, we deliberately go out and we do things that we know do not please you with the hope that you would spare our lives to live, to repent. Oh God, help us today. Help your people, oh God, that have gone back into sin, a lifestyle of sin, while hanging on to a church door. Lord, help us today. Give us that strength, oh God, to yield to your spirit because it's only strong people that walk by your spirit who can say no to the flesh and bring that flesh under subjection, that flesh that's causing a lifestyle of sin, even on becoming Christians. Lord, help us to not only talk the talk, but to walk the walk so that those who are looking for a better way to live will see a light in us and come to glorify you. Oh God, you said if we lift you up here in the earth, you will draw men unto you. So help us, oh God, to lift you up and not to become stumbling blocks. Oh God, help us, forgive us, Lord. Touch your people today, those who are sick, those who are not well. 
those who feel downtrodden, those who are brokenhearted, those who are mourning. Lord, you said those who are mourning will be comforted. So Lord, today, just let a fresh wave of your goodness just flow over their lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let your peace now, Lord, come to minds that are troubled, hearts that are crying, hurt. Heal hurts, O oh God. Bind up wounds. Help your people to let go of hurt, those things that is building up resentment in their lives, O oh God. That's not the way you have called us to live. Lord, I thank you now that as we yield ourselves to you, you will do a mighty work in our lives, individually and even collectively. Lord, somebody is being accused, accused wrongfully, and it's hurting them. Oh God. I pray that you would touch that one today. Cause them to understand, oh God, that your grace is sufficient for their lives right now. And Lord, you have called us to endure hardships like a good soldier, knowing that persecution will come when we take a stand for you. Hallelujah. But Lord, you've got us in the palm of your hands and no devil, no demon, no adversary can pluck us out. We are secure in you, regardless of what is going on around us. So we thank you now, God, and we bless your holy name for doing a mighty work in our lives. Give us testimonies, testimonies of your goodness, testimonies of how we overcame so that others can be inspired. Others will rise in faith knowing that you're no respect of persons, that if you did it for one, you will do it for another. Bless your people today, God, every one of them, all who are in hearing of this word today bless their lives oh god cause them to prosper to prosper not just physically in wealth and riches and material possessions but spiritually spiritual wealth a wealth of spiritual knowledge wisdom even to impart to others yes lord we bless your name, O oh God. Holy God, you are great. And that's why we praise you. Thank you, God. We now accept all that you have for us by faith. Yes, Lord. Even as we come close to the end of the year, I pray, God, that you would keep us under your wings. You would keep us protected Protect us from the wiles of the adversary. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you came to give us life and life more abundantly. And we will walk in that. We will dwell in that. We will live that life. That Zoe kind of life, oh God, that you have come to give us. Lord, we will not back down. Bring us up. Help us today, Father, to understand who we are in you. And we will not be afraid to live lives that are holy, sanctified lives, called out lives, lives that are different, where when we walk amongst our peers, they will know that we have a relationship with you and they would want that yes Lord we bless your name today 
In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Friends, listen. The Lord has called us to holy living. A life of holiness. We hardly hear much about that nowadays. Because everybody is preaching another gospel. Only a select few are still preaching holiness and the good news of Christ. Let's not get caught up in that, my friends. Let's live as unto God. Your reward is sure. All right? When you're ridiculed, when you're mocked for living holy, when you're teased even about your past, because that's what the devil does. He, he can't come with anything new. So he has to keep harping on your past. And you know, you think you is anybody. I remember what you used to do. That's the devil. That's the devil. But know that you're living for Christ. Let it not be said that nothing has changed. All right? When we have encountered Christ, everything changes. Everything. Rely on God, friends, for your sustenance. If you look to man, you're going to be disappointed. You are, because man is fallible. Not every decision that man makes is going to be to your benefit. You understand? But the Lord has your best interest at heart. You can trust and believe that. That everything that the Lord allows in your life has a purpose. Look for the lessons. Don't curse God and die. <laughs> All right? Like what Job's wife wanted him to do. He held on. He told her, you speak like a foolish woman. All right, know that this too shall pass. Whatever it is that's bothering your life, as long as you make up your mind that you're not going to walk away from God, you're not going to turn away from Him, this too shall pass. It doesn't mean life will get easier, friends, but it means that you will become stronger. All right, every test brings you closer you are moving from level to level and then when you leave levels now that you get into dimensions with god that should be our aim where we want to live for god to the point where we see ourselves growing in him all right that's my encouragement to you today, friends, to hold on to God. Do not become weary of well-doing, right? Do not, the only thing we should become weary of is evil behavior according to what the word said today. You know, let's be done with all the devil. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Had a quick break there, but to God be the glory. But let's live lives that God approves. All right? Let us live lives that frustrate the devil. Oh, yes. Frustrate him. You frustrate the devil, friends, by living right. That's how you frustrate him. You don't frustrate him by joining his camp and doing what he says. No. Live right. Live according to what God says. And you will frustrate him <laughs> enough. He will go away for a season and then he will come back. And when he comes back, you're ready again. If you slip up, make a mistake, run to God. Don't run away from him. Don't stop going to church because you say, well, you know I'm not worthy. No, devil is a liar. Take your situations to the Lord and say, Father, Forgive me as I turn away from this because that's what repentance is. It's not saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry every day. And you go back and do the same thing. No. Even in our human relationships, if we do that, we're pushing people away. 
If you keep on hurting somebody and all you have to say is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and you do it again and again and again, after a while, they're just going to be like, okay, I see this here. You're lying. But you see, God knows all things. So you don't have to be afraid to go to God and say, Father, I need your help here. I'm struggling here. I need you. But if you stay away from God, that's exactly what the adversary wants. All right? All right. May the Lord bless you today, friends. One of my very good friends and listeners in this devotion is celebrating a birthday today. Her name is Deborah Rogers Cooper. Happy birthday. Anybody else celebrating anything? All right. Put it there quick. <laughs> and I'll give you a shout out celebrating anniversary birthday you know graduation special occasion whatever it is but may the lord bless your lives today each of you whatever it is that you're celebrating you could just be celebrating the goodness of god like i am right i know god is good friends and that's why i serve him that's why i'm i i just feel this <laughs> Um, joy when it comes to the things of God because I know that he loves me and he loves me with an everlasting love when I say I know who I am I'm not just saying it I really do and that's one of the things that frustrates the devil as well you know <laughs> he wants you to walk around with your head hung down because he did this and he did that no way Let's walk knowing who we are, friends. Let's be confident in who God is. We call it Godfidence. That's what it is. Don't let anybody or anything cause you to walk around with your head hung down because of shame. All right? Whatever. If you're involved in something that's causing that, well, ask the Lord to help you. But that has to change. Okay? Let people talk. They will talk, they will say, but once you know you have turned your stuff over to God, then you'll be all right. All right, friends? Okay. Oh, happy birthday to Faith. All right. Miss Wani, yes, please. Tell Faith, happy birthday from the devotion crew. Yes. <laughs> to God be the glory. Right, and most of us, we're just celebrating life, all right? So, I wish you nothing but the best today. You know, find something today that you can change about the way that you have been walking that would, you know, bring you closer to God. So, if you know that you weren't praying as much or you weren't reading your Bible as much because these are spiritual disciplines where if we do them we will be drawn closer to God that's what it talked about when it says you know we should desire the sincere milk of the word so that we may grow so that's how we're gonna grow okay friends all right so may the Lord bless you today May the Lord cause his favor to find your life, to overtake your life, to run you down, to cause you to, you know, experience new things in him. May the Lord open doors that seem to have been sealed shut. May the Lord just do a new thing in your life. life something that you can give him all the glory for, all, all the praise, right? Yes, we have life. And yes, everybody wants to give God thanks for life. But what if he can infuse that life with greatness? Greatness, greatness. Go on out, my friends, and be great. Do not let anybody stop you. All right? Do not let anybody stop you from being great for God. Do not let their evil words, their negative words set you back. Do not believe the lies that the enemy tells. If his mouth is moving, he's lying. And there are times when he employs people to work with him. So when they open their mouths, his pure foolishness comes out. You do not have to take their word for it. Take God's word. What does God's word say about me? 
The word of God says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. And I do believe that it's also declaring that you are a victor, not a victim. So don't walk around anymore with this victim mentality. Everybody hates me. No, that's a lie. Everybody does not hate you. The Lord loves you and he loves you with an everlasting love. All right? Keep that in the forefront of your mind and you will understand that whatever God does, it's perfect. All right? Because he has your best interests at heart. Okay, friends? So until we meet again in this fashion, may the Lord bless you. Take care.